Okie dokie. Hello, everybody. All right, let's get set up here. And uh, I'll walk you through kind of what I want to do today. So for the longest time now, um, you've been able to go and create a product and like change the image, right? So like, choosing a different image, that sort of thing. Uh, and if you have a new product, now I might I might be remembering this wrong, but if we have a new product, I feel like as long as it has a price, a name, and a webhook, it's like a, I think it's like kitel, kitehook dot dev slash hooks, something like that. Uh, we should improve this at some point too. That's saved, but uh, okay. So we still can't publish it probably because it doesn't have an image. Uh, but something I want to be able to work towards is making it possible for people to uh, pro publish products that don't have images because that can be like a barrier for a lot of people. Um, trying to come up with, you know, some graphic if they have no artistic skills. So it'd be nice if um, I could have something like, you know, my tester and Laravel course here and say I didn't have an image for this, but I did choose a theme color. Uh, having it just show the checkout page like a little colored strip at the top or something instead. Just basically make it optional, even though it's probably uh, encouraged. So uh, the first thing that I want to work on for doing that is making it possible to remove an image that you've already added. Uh, so right now, if you've created a new product and you haven't added an image to it, it'll stay without an image, right? But uh, as soon as you add an image, from then on, there's no way to like get rid of it. You can change it to a different image, uh, but there's nothing that you can do to actually get rid of it and go back to like a blank state. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I want to kind of figure out today. Uh, question, will test and Laravel include Laravel 5.5 updates? Uh, we'll, we'll probably do a lesson or two updating to 5.5 if there's anything that breaks. I, th I don't think anything actually breaks for 5.5, though. Uh, 5.3 to 5.4 was quite a big change. Uh, but for 5.5, it should all be kind of pretty similar. So anyways, uh, what I want to work on is making it possible to somehow remove this image and get back to the state that we were in before. So there's going to be two sort of uh, elements to that, right? We're going to need like a user interface for it. So right now we just have this change banner image, uh, but we're going to want to have some way of kind of indicating that you could remove this image, right? So maybe on hover, instead of just change banner image like this, uh, maybe we'll make this like a button or something and we'll have like, uh, or remove this image underneath it, something like that. And then we also have to figure out how it's going to work on the back end in terms of uh, once you've removed that and you go to hit save, what should that send through uh, to the server and how should that actually delete it? So trying to decide uh, where the best place to start is. Uh, probably makes most sense to start on the back end. Uh, so let's update the back end code through some tests to make sure that we can actually remove an image. So head over to Sublime here and uh, let's scroll on down into our tests folder. Look at our feature tests for updating a product. Okay, so we do have a test for banner image can be removed. But I, I'm not totally sure that this is going to be, yeah, okay, so I don't know, uh, for anyone who hasn't been following along with a lot of the streams, we did some work a little while back to update this whole form to be like an Ajax form submission, right? And uh, we updated all these tests to make JSON patch requests to update the product. Uh, but because I knew I wanted to do some interesting things with the banner image, we didn't actually even really bother updating these tests. So let's start by doing that. So we'll have a user, we'll have a product that has an image specified. And we want to make sure that when we make a JSON patch request, passing through valid parameters, but with a null image path, which I think is probably good. But let's double check that we are actually calling an image path in the other tests still. Uh, where's an example where we pass through an image? Okay, so uh, here's an image path. Uh, so let's make sure that when that gets passed through as null, that the product has a no image path at the end of the day. So 
we might actually already have this basically working. Okay, so that, that is working. So let's head over to the product controller and look at the update method and make sure that we can make this test fail. Okay, so right now it's just gonna update it uh, no matter what. And the validation rows come from the product. So depending on the state that the product is in, um, you can or can't do certain things, right? So if you look at product validation rules, you can see we have unpublished validation rules and then published validation rules, which just adds these extra rules about price. So we can see that image path is optional, uh, but the image must be like a real image on the server. So we could get this test to fail by just doing something like making sure that the image is actually required and then we get a validation error. So it looks like we actually already had uh, some of the server side stuff in place, which is cool. Uh, so let's just see that passing again. And then here we have the test that an image must exist. So if you do provide an image, it must be a real image. Uh, cool, so that's pretty decent. Now something about the theme color being an empty string, uh, that's probably okay. That should still get converted to null. Although now that we're sending through JSON, which we weren't before, we could probably send through null as the theme color instead of empty string. Uh, the project is not open source. It's actually a SaaS app that I'm uh, building to help me sell uh, my course and book and stuff like that. So it's actually like a SaaS product that I'm working on. I don't think it'll ever be open source, but I do share, you know, tons of the stuff through the streams and stuff. Okay, so um, since the server stuff is working, then I think we can be pretty confident that as long as we actually make it possible to send through a request from um, the front end that passes through null as the image path that we should be able to delete it. Uh, so let's do a little bit of messing around on the front end then. So here's a, what do we got here? Here's kind of the code for that chunk on the screen. So this chunk here. So uh, right here, this is kind of a little, a neat little trick. Um, so if we get rid of this, look what happens when we refresh the page. Wait for that to compile. It's so fast that it's hard to actually see it, but if we throttle it, maybe we can see it. Is that not compiling? Hmm. Looks like we had some uh, some stuff cached. I guess this was actually working already. So I don't know if this is actually needed anymore. Uh, the goal of this originally was uh, to make it possible to, uh, to make it so that the screen didn't jump when you refresh the page. So sometimes what happens when you're dealing with view stuff is that you'll have some elements that um, don't load right away because the view components and stuff don't render right away, right? They have to wait for the page to finish and then they kind of pop in after the fact. And when you do that, uh, sometimes you get a little bit of jank on the screen or things like jump to a new spot. Um, so what I was doing here is using uh, these vcloak helpers to basically say, here's an element that I want to render while view is still loading. And because I have this aspect ratio helper on it, it would basically create a div that's forced to the right height, which meant that when view was done loading, um, this would get swapped out with this. And because they're the exact same height, you wouldn't have that weird jank on the screen. So it seems like we don't actually need it because I probably solved it by switching to a background image here. Um, so we can't really go into it any further, but it is kind of a cool trick. Maybe we can find a more interesting example to demonstrate another time. But anyways, let's take a look at how this works. So, uh, one tricky thing about file inputs, right, is they're hard to style in the browser. So if you have um, a standard file input, oh, you get like that really ugly kind of chrome uh, looking thing. Like if we take this input, say, and we just like stick it out here, just so you can kind of see what it looks like. Is this compiling? Let's turn this off and start recompiling in case uh, it got messed up somehow. Hmm. Wonder why we're not seeing that uh, 
file input. Let's put it down here just for, oh, it's got the pseudo hidden class on it, duh. So this is like the standard file picker, right? Which is like impossible to customize and super ugly. So the sort of trick that I use for that sort of thing is, you know how you can wrap a label around an input and then the label is clickable and that'll count as clicking the actual file input? So what I do is I make this whole thing from here to here a label for the file input, uh, which makes it like nice and clickable, right? But since we wanna kinda change this UI to maybe have like a button here and then like a link underneath, uh, we're gonna have to tweak it slightly. So let's uh, think about how we want it to look. So I think what we're going to do is have just a div instead of a label. And if we do this, um, we don't need this clickable helper. That's what gives me like the right cursor because we don't want the whole background to be clickable now. Let's just see what that gets us. Okay, so now we have um, just a div. So I can't click that anymore. So we're going to need to put a button inside there. Uh, that wraps up this file input. So what we'll do is we'll go back to like the label approach that we had before. So let's make a label here and we'll wrap this in the label and we'll move all of this inside of this uh, flex fill uh, container. And let's just stick a P tag here for now, uh, maybe a span and I wonder if this will work. Let's see if we can give the button, the label a button class. I want to say like update uh, banner image or change banner image. We'll just use the same text from below. Kind of just hack on this and see where we get. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So it looks like we can style the label as a, a button. And if we click that, we do get the file input picker stuff now uh, because clicking the label counts as clicking the input, right? So even though we have this input hidden with this pseudo hidden thing, and I wonder if I can show you that pseudo hidden thing. Let's see, it's probably in my CSS framework here. Pseudo hidden. So what this does is sets it to position absolute to take it out of the document flow, makes it invisible, and then puts it behind everything. Um, so this can be kind of helpful when you want something to still be like on screen and like accessible by tabbing around, uh, but you don't want um, it to actually affect things or be visible. So now that we have a button for this, uh, we can add like another link underneath it. So uh, what do you think about this? Um, camera icon. I could probably just ditch it, to be honest. Let's ditch that. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll add like a couple P tags here. We'll stick like the word or in this. And then underneath the, that, we'll just do something like uh, remove this image. We're going to have to do some work to kind of, um, obviously we don't want to show this if there's not an image to remove. Uh, but let's just kind of like work on getting there. So like this is obviously heinous looking. So we don't want that to be uh, quite as huge probably. So why don't we go with like text uh, regular, what's, what are my text sizes called these days? Uh, been doing a lot of work on this CSS framework. So we've been changing quite a few things. So it looks like it is uh, base still. All right. Okay, so now we have like um, some text under there for that. So is this centered the way I want it to be? I think we're gonna want to make this button piece a little bit pushed further down. So I think what we might end up doing here is sticking like um, a little bit of an extra margin on top of that button, just like a superficial sort of visually a little bit more centered. And we might actually wanna make this overlay more extreme so that's easier to read this text. So right now we have this uh, BG overlay soft. If I go and look at my app.less file, this is kind of a mess right now, uh, but I have a few different ones. So we got overlay softest, soft, and dark. So let's try overlay dark.
All right, yeah, so that makes it a little easier to read that text. So, what do people normally do for, I guess like, we, we kind of want this to be a button, but we don't want it to be styled like a button. So I guess we want to do something like, we'll make it a button and set it as a type button. Just kind of want to see what styling we get out of the box. I don't want it to look like a button. Okay, so it uh, looks like we're going to have to be fancy with our font colors. So we'll call this text light. Okay, so now it's like a button, which is better in terms of being able to add click handler stuff to it in a way that's not semantically awkward. And let's take this or tag or this or text to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit stand out a little bit less, uh, maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, something like that. I think we're going to make this text smaller. Um, I've never done team building, and it's not really something uh, that we're going to touch on in these streams or anything like that. Okay, maybe I'll push this down a little bit further. Yeah, that's looking more like kind of what I want. Uh, this label, I think we're going to have to give it a roll of button. So I get the cursor that I want. Cool. And um, yeah, I think that'll be an improvement. So let's just make sure that we can still change the banner image. Uh, did we mess something up? Okay, so let's change this, change that out and hit save. It does seem to still take effect. That's cool. All right, so let's work on this uh, remove this image thing. So first things first, let's make sure that only shows up if there is an image to display. So I think what we're gonna wanna do is wrap all this up in an extra div. And we're gonna wanna show that conditionally based on something. We're just gonna have to figure out how do we know if the product has an image. So, one way to know that I think would be based on, however I was calculating the banner styles, which is what adds that background image, that uh, display. So let's uh, see how that works. So basically we just get the image preview path. And image preview path checks like, if the image preview is null, uh, then we use the placeholder. Okay, so. How does the image preview get set? It's been a while since I looked at this. So uh, when the product is first loaded, we just use whatever was set as the image URL. So it might be null uh, by default, which is kind of okay. So why don't we try, um, why don't we make a computed property, something like has banner image. And I think we can just return this image preview it's not equal null. And then we can show this conditionally based on that property. So the vshow equals has banner image. Let's just see how this works here. So that still shows up, which is good. Maybe keep the console open in case we get any errors showing up. And then I think we'll also keep a second tab open where instead of having um, instead of having this existing product open, we'll have a new product that has no image added to it yet. So this one. So if we hover over this, we can see we just get change banner image. Uh, we don't get the or remove thing. Something that's a little bit funky about this is that by completely removing it, uh, it messes up our our margin thing. So I think we actually want to only conditionally add that margin, which I think is fine, but let's just do that here. So uh, we can just say if has banner image is true, then we want to add the, what was it, MT6? So we'll add the MT6 class if 
has banner image. Okay, so that's centered now. And here, um, it's still centered-ish, kind of more uh, roughed in by hand. But I think that's okay. We might even want to just like show this button all the time if there's uh, no banner image, but that's something that we can think about next. Okay, so uh, let's get remove this image, deleting the image in the form. So if you look at the way that this stuff is set up, basically um, we have new banner image and image preview. So it's probably some simplification that we can do here because um, if you look down below, when we go to update the product, create a new promise. Um, if there is a new banner image, then uh, we want to make a request to upload that image to the server first. And then when that's done, we update uh, everything else. But if there's not a new banner image, then we just resolve immediately uh, with the existing product image path. So we can't really rely on getting the image path from the product anymore because uh, we have this button that is now gonna have to basically set the banner image to null and the product cut comes in as a prop so we can't mutate that so I think what we want to do is default a new property in the form so just like we have name price description and theme color right which are these fields here I think we want to make image path just part of the form I think that's going to simplify a lot of things so let's put image path in there because that's what we end up sending through here. And we'll just have it default to this dot product dot image path. And I'm trying to think uh, if there's anything fancy. It's sort of hard to keep this all in my head because when someone actually up when someone chooses a new file from the file picker we don't have the path to that we have to upload it to the server before we sent the image path on the form so it's almost like what we actually want to do is here now instead of resolving this um, you know like with this response that we extract the data out of I think we actually just want to always get um, this stuff formed on image path and we just want to make sure that here um, when this is done, we extract the path and assign that to our form. Okay, so bear with me here. So we're going to get the response. And then basically what we want to do, I think, is say this dot form dot image path is equal to uh, response dot data dot path I think uh, and let's just undo and confirm that's what we had before Oop. Oop. couple steps behind here yeah response dot data dot path okay so if we get the uh, path back from the Ajax endpoint uh, then we can set that and then after that's done we want to resolve this promise. And it doesn't matter what we resolve it with. Uh, so in this case, we aren't using this response anymore, so we can just make this like an empty callback. And here, we can just resolve right away with nothing if there's no new banner image. Okay. Um, Let's just make sure that these changes haven't affected the existing behavior. So we haven't added the remove this image behavior yet, but if we do get and get, that updates that, save it, refresh it, still working. Um, cool, so that's like a slightly different way of doing what we were already doing before that I think is probably cleaner. Uh, it makes this uh, request never have to be concerned about how this uh, image path is getting set. So I think that's probably okay. 
The thing we want to do now, though, is basically make it possible for someone to remove the image. So let's add a click handler to that uh, remove button. So I'll move this onto a separate line just so that we can see things a little bit more clearly. Something that I find myself doing a lot lately with um, with HTML elements that have view stuff added to them, because uh, if you're not careful, you can end up with really, really long lines. What I've been doing recently is keeping all of my standard HTML attributes on the first line and then doing this kind of weird syntax where I keep this on its own line, but then nest under any view stuff uh, like this, which is kind of funky looking, but it's the best kind of formatting I've been able to come up with. So you might have like a couple view related things here. Okay, so on click, basically we want to do uh, remove banner image. Okay, so let's add a method here. I think we can just stick it above submit, that's fine. We'll call this remove banner image. And what does remove banner image need to do? So. For sure, it needs to set uh, formed on image path to null. But what I'm trying to decide is um, what it has to do in terms of this new banner image property. So this is sort of like a just a little bucket to hold the image uh, after someone actually goes through the process of picking it in the file upload window. So when this is what happens when someone opens the file picker and picks a file and hits like open or whatever. It fires this change event, which calls this, where basically we get to see the files that are now attached to that file input. We get the first one off of it and we assign that to the new banner image. Um, and that's kind of like uh, a little bucket to hold that file until we actually go ahead and upload it here. And then once we have a path to it, relative to what the server cares about in terms of a path, then we can stuff that in the form so that when someone actually just goes to save the details, they don't have to pass through the actual image content, they just have to pass through a path. Um, so it kind of makes this update a little bit simpler because the image uploading part and then there's like the plain properties part are separated. But let's think about if, if I'm here and I've clicked change banner image and then I've set it to heroic ons, and then I click remove this image. Hmm, this is actually more complicated than I thought because if there was already an image there, should removing the image cancel and go back to the image that was there before? Or should removing the image uh, set it to no image at all? We'll start by making it no image at all. Uh, but I think what we'll have to do is actually play with it and just see how it feels. So let's also set the new banner image to null so that we aren't tracking that. Okay, let's just uh, see how it feels. Okay, so we got test room and Laravel. If I hit remove this image, nothing happens. So that's great. <laughs> um, okay, let's look at the properties of it and just see what happens here. Okay. So new banner image is null. I got this set up to show responsively and it's kind of bothering me. Here's our form. So the image path is the string to the original image that we had on the server before, right? If we hit remove, it's not even doing what we want. So um, let's make sure that we even did this right. Remove banner image, okay. Remove banner image. I, I'm always fearful that like my JavaScript is just not compiling or something. I don't know if you've ever run into this problem where like you're hammering on something trying to get it to work and you don't know what's going wrong. And then you realize that, oh, it just wasn't even updating my code at all. Okay, so that's still not working. So let's uh, stick a, a little bit of logging in here and try and find out why. Okay, so it's getting clicked. 
But for some reason, it's not setting the form's image path to null. Or maybe it is now, and something else is the problem. Oh, sorry, we're looking at image preview. Okay, so the image path is null, so that worked. Uh, so what we also have to do is make sure that the image preview is working properly. So I wonder if we actually don't need this as its own data property anymore. Uh, we kind of do because image path and image URL are different things. So I guess we could just clear out the image preview. It just seems weird to have to clear out the banner image, uh, the image preview, and the image path. But maybe that's just how it has to be. So the image preview is the URL, which could either be a base64 version of the image if it came from the file picker, or it could be an actual URL to the image if it came from the server. Uh, and we have these two different properties, right? So this is like the publicly accessible URL to load the image. This is the path to the image in this, uh, in kind of like the format that the server cares about, you know, like uh, it's, uh, I think it's like images slash something. It doesn't tell you the full path or anything like that. It's just sort of more of an, an identifier than anything. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so we got this, click this. All right, so that goes away. This kind of jumps down, kind of funky, um, whatever. I think probably what makes the most sense is if there's no image, not to do this whole hover thing at all. I think uh, it should be different, uh, different state completely, which I think would make that uh, jankiness like a little bit less weird. We could even maybe do like some cool animation or something if we want, but I will just leave that as it is for now. Let's unpublish this product. Oh, that's kind of funky that that doesn't affect the ability to save it. Okay, so we remove the image, um, and that's not considering it dirty. Okay, so something else we're going to have to update. So, I think we have a computed property called no changes, which is sort of an unintuitive way of... Um, of saying that there's the form is dirty or not. So if all of these are true, then that means nothing has changed on the form. And if nothing has changed, then we don't want the save button to be active. So I think all we actually have to do here is uh, basically just also check that the product's image path is the same as the form's image path. Because if we set the form's image path to null and the product did have an image path, well, now it's a dirty state, right? So if we remove this image, now you can see the save button is active. Uh, so we should be able to save this and see what we get. So let's clear this out. Okay, so it's saved. And if we look at what we sent through, we sent through a payload that had the image path set to null. This weird thing with the theme color being an empty string kind of bothers me, but uh, we'll figure that out eventually. Uh, but now I bet if we refresh yeah, we've lost that old image, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's cool. So let's uh, just kind of play with it and see if we notice any weird behavior. Front end user interface programming is kind of hard to anticipate everything that you might have done wrong sometimes. Okay, so we've got a pending image that hasn't been uploaded, right? So let's wipe this out. Let's delete it. Okay, so now it doesn't even let us save because it had no image before anyway. So that seems kind of good. So we'll set it to Spark. Oh, it didn't work. Uh-oh. So trying to set. So I can't set it to the same image. OK, so if I go and say I want to make this Laravel Spark and then remove it, and then I try and set it back to Laravel Spark, it doesn't work. So let's look at the state of this thing and see if there's any data here that is not kind of what we want. Okay, so something seems, oh, you know what it is? Um, this event, this update image preview thing, 
it runs when um, it runs when the files associated with the element have changed. And if we set it to one image, which is Spark in this case, right? So it changed now, which is why that all fired properly. But when I remove it, so let's actually look here. Um, if you look at, you can see, here's the file picker. I guess it doesn't show us the fact that it has um, a file associated with it, which is annoying. But this file picker, right now it has a value, right? It has a file chosen from the file system. When I remove it, that file is still there. So when I change it back to the file um, that was already there, it's not firing a change event because it's still the exact same content. So I think what we have to do is figure out a way to clear out the files associated with the file input uh, once someone hits that button. So do we have a ref on it? Uh, no, we don't. Okay, so let's look at the view docs. So I think they're called refs, right? And this gives us a way to access um, that in our element. Yeah. Okay, so let's head back here and give our file thing a ref of um, what we'll call it, like banner image input, something like that. And then down here, where we remove the banner image, we need to be able to basically do something like this dot dollar refs dot banner image input um, dot, you know, clear files, something like that, uh, pseudocode refs dot attached file dot value equals null. Cool. Let me just Google that quickly just so I understand how that works. MDN attached file. This is a good trick, by the way, for uh, finding answers to JavaScript related things. Always include MDN because they have the best docs and all this stuff. Um, okay, so let's look at attached. Uh, it doesn't show up there. JavaScript remove value from file input. I just want to make sure that I uh, have seen all the ways jQuery, no, go away. Um, let's look at this one. All right, let's try it. Oh, attached file, got it, got it. Okay, so we just have to clear the value. Now, something I'm wondering about, I'm gonna put this in here just to see. Um, uh, value changed. Oh, if I could type, that'd be good. I wanna find out if this is gonna fire when we change that manually. Okay. All right, so we'll click this, we'll set it to Spark. We have value change, that shows up. Remove it. It doesn't fire that event again, uh, which is interesting, but that's okay, I guess. Probably makes things simpler. Um, but yeah, that's cool. So now I think if we go and set this to Spark again, it should work again, and it does. And now I can save it, and it's there. Yeah, and it's all good. And if we're uh, on a brand new one, we can say, you know, we want to give this a banner image of like test driven Laravel or whatever. Save that. And that's there. And now I can remove that if I want. I can save it. We can refresh it. And uh, it's good to go. Cool. So that's looking pretty good. That's looking like an improvement uh, in terms of getting things sort of working. So let's get rid of some nasty logging here. I don't know if we were doing it anywhere else. This is kind of a bummer to me that there's literally four things that we have to do when we actually want to remove a banner image, but 
Uh, what can you do? So let's think um, if there's anything else interesting about this feature. So I think kind of the next thing would be dealing with sort of the validation side of it. Like we want to make product images not required anymore. So I think, um, so here's like a product. I can't publish it because it's going to act like um, the image is required for it to be published, I think. So if we look at the product class, I think there's like an is publishable. Yeah, so the image path can't be null. Um, so maybe let's look at some tests for that. Let's make a quick commit too, so we don't we'll check out a new branch here called optional banner image. And uh, we'll say add UI for removing existing banner image. So if we look at the, okay, let's see. We've got a product test. It has a publishable product can be published. That's fine. A complete product is publishable. Is there anything here about, okay, so here we probably have one that says image is required to be publishable. So let's just change this to image is not required to be publishable. So if you look at, uh, for example, description, we we're going to want to set this up the same way. So we're going to create a publishable product, set it to null, assert true that it's publishable, and assert true that publishable is set to true in the array. So this is going to fail. Uh, if we head over to the product now, we can just get rid of this. And I think if we run this test now, it should hopefully pass. And it does. Let's check the whole test file, though. Yeah. I do plan to publish a CSS framework. That's something I've been working on a little bit in my spare time uh, lately. And Jonathan Rennick has been helping me with it. It's been pretty fun. I can give you, like, a sneak peek of something, actually. Here's, like, a docs page that Jonathan started working on. You can kind of see some stuff. It's not flushed out yet, but, you know, it's going to be real. So there's your little teaser. <laughs> okay, so this file was passing, right? Let's check the whole test suite. So the whole test suite is passing, which is interesting, but somewhat surprising to me because there's this published product test here, and I guess we don't have any tests here about... Um, what happens when someone tries to unpublish a or publish a product that's not publishable? I guess we just decided to handle that through the uh, unit tests, though. So that's okay. So now that this product is publishable, if we go back and refresh the UI, we should hopefully have publish here. And probably some interesting things are going to happen. Okay, so it got published, right? Which is interesting. If we head back here and click this link, uh, I'm surprised we didn't have more errors than this. Because basically there's supposed to be an image here, right? And, okay, so yeah, something is messed up here. Image source unknown, which is obviously not what we want. So let's add another commit that says, um, Banner is not required to be publishable. The CSS framework is going to be called uh, Tailwind. It's kind of the working name. thought it was kind of cool because it sort of came out of being worked on on Kite Tail. And uh, Tailwind is like something that, you know, propels you faster in the direction that you're already going. So it seemed like a cool, appropriate name for something that helps you rapidly build user interfaces. So the next thing that I want to do, I guess, is on this checkout screen... Uh, if there's no image, have a like a colored border instead. Uh, let me just see if I can even show you something. If this is working, I never know. Like if the webhooks aren't set up, okay. So something went wrong with like the webhook. 
here probably. Oh man. So what did we get? View, view.name, not found. This new Laravel 5 stack trace thing has sort of been uh, throwing me for a little bit of a loop lately. But um, let's try one of the products that I know works. Oh, it's not published. Changes back to test driven Laravel. Save it. And back to the products. I think we probably just have this pointing at a non-existent webhook or something weird. Um, I might be wrong though. This might not work either. When you have things that are all dependent on all these services talking to each other, it's terrifying a lot of the time. Okay. Cool, that worked. I swear we used to have a top border here. Border T8. So I, I must have uh, messed something up in my CSS when I was working on uh, moving some stuff over. Do I have border color overrides here? Now what about border size overrides? It might be how I have this uh, pulled in. If we look at my uh, package.json file. Well, it's coming in from that file, but let's see if we do yarn link tailwind CSS. Okay. And then we compile this again. And then we refresh. We still don't get that border top. Okay, so something's going wrong with my CSS framework where we're not getting the border class. Um, generated like border T8 should be doing something so let's take a look at that quickly you can kind of see some of the how the stuff is done here so here's our border width scale so that does have a value and it does look like we call define border widths so that should be running so let's take a look at the generated CSS here I'll look for dot border t two four eight. All right, so there is a dot border uh, t eight there, but for some reason, it's uh not showing up in. Uh, so actually, you know what it could be. I wonder if this checkouts files refers to a different CSS file. Let's look at um. Resources, views, purchase, dot show. Elixir, oh, that's, this can't be the right view. I might be using a different CSS file for the stuff that's not on the back end. Uh, so let's see if we can get to the bottom of that. Purchases, show, I mean, I think this would be it. I think this is just probably messed up in some weird way. Because if you look at like, I'm using mix now, you know? <laughs> so this might just be like completely old. I wonder if I'm doing the same thing for the JavaScript, yeah. Okay, so let's just update this quickly to be pointing at mix stuff instead of, uh, instead of Elixir stuff. Cause that's probably pulling in an old file. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so that's all working. So, to get back to the original point, uh, what we want to do, I think, is be able to remove an image like this, save this. Uh, it's still published, which is good, so it's still publishable even without um, an image. Now, hmm, there's one thing that... I guess it doesn't matter now, but it might have mattered before. I wonder what would have happened if I removed the image and then hit save. Oh yeah, it would have come through as like unpublishable or whatever. And then, yeah, yeah, it all would have worked. I remember how this all works now. It's been a little while since I worked on this project. Okay, so we want to be able to go here and now see that like, just like the receipt page that we get this cool little strip at the top, uh, if there's no image. 
So let's go and take a look at the pro uh, the checkout form dot view, and let's look at product checkouts new because I can't remember where the view starts and where the blade stops. Okay, cool. So I guess here we basically just want to only show this div if product, um, let's check, do we have like a, I wonder if we have like a helper method on product for checking if there's an image. No, so I guess we just wanna check if uh, image URL is null for now, but it'd be nice to add a helper like has image, but I'd like to test drive that. So uh, let's leave it for now. Okay, so let's just say if product image URL does not equal null, then we want to include the product image. I had something I haven't figured out for sure that I'd be curious to know what people in the chat do. If you have a blade tags and then Laravel or and then HTML inside of it, do you nest this an extra level deep so it's like kind of easier to see that this is conditional, even though like in the rendered HTML now you're gonna have like an extra layer of indentation, or it can also sometimes make it hard to see that like this is actually at the same level of indentation as this. It's always been a hard thing for me to come up with a, a really solid decision on. I think I've been leaning more towards doing it this way, which I don't love, but it's interesting to find out what people do there typically. Okay, so let's just make sure that this uh, doesn't even try to load the image now. And that's cool because it happens on the server side, so it's a little bit more, uh, that's just kind of nice. And if we check out the receipt thing, let's take a look at how we're doing that border top color. So let's just copy this uh, style thing. Actually, let's copy this whole thing and paste it above this card, and we'll just kind of like compare. So, we actually want to make this border T8 conditional now. So I guess we can just put it in here. This is kind of gross. Um, how would I do this in a way that doesn't make me sick to my stomach? I don't, I really hate the idea of doing like a conditional around just the opening HTML tag and having two of those. I think I would rather uh, put it in the style tag somehow, uh, but I also don't want to have like this big long ternary. So I think I would almost be inclined at this point. Whoa, Sublime about to crash? Man, Sublime doesn't crash very often. Let's uh, force quit Sublime. Okay. Let's go back to our uh, checkouts new and our purchases show. I'll copy that card again and head over here. I guess, okay, so we already have that, so that's cool. Um, yeah, so I think what I'll do is I'll, <laughs> I'll always have it. Uh, but I think what I want to do is wrap, oh, sh did I just crash Sublime again? Holy shit. So something about hitting enter after this double quote is crashing Sublime every single time. So it really doesn't want me to do this uh, solution that I wanted to have. <laughs> okay, check out, let's try this one more time. Checkout's new. Purchases show. Something probably weird about who knows what, but yeah. Um, don't know what's going on there. So basically we wanna just make this uh, top border sort of conditional. So I wanted to put the contents of this in a separate line so I could wrap blade statements around it, uh, but it doesn't seem like that's gonna work out without us uh, losing another battle to Sublime here. So instead, um, I guess we want to conditionally add this class and then set the border colors and inline style. So that's even more awful. 
So let's just do this in the dirtiest way possible and, and see if we can like get it working. So if the product image URL, um, I guess if there is a product image URL, we can just use truthiness. Then we'll do nothing. Uh, otherwise, we'll do this border top eight thing. Um, and actually, you know what? I think we can always keep that there because there's no border set. This actually might be the easiest way to do it. So let's just see what we get. Yeah, undefined variable purchase. Where did I type purchase? Oh, purchase product theme color. Okay, so let's head over to the product class. I think we have a theme color method that we can grab here. Okay. So instead of the purchase product theme color, we just want the product's theme color. I'm so afraid of hitting enter there now. Okay, so this doesn't seem to be quite working. Oh, you know what it you know what I bet it is? I bet you we have the same problem here where I'm including the wrong damn CSS file. Let's see. Yep, Elixir. Whoops. This just goes to show, I guess, how rarely I have to write CSS. <laughs> um, the way I've got things set up that it doesn't actually bite me. Now, the JavaScript one is a scarier one, to be honest, but sure. Cool. Uh, so we could have something like this if uh, there's no image. And then if we, uh, if we did have an image... Like say we went here and we changed this to test server Laravel and we saved that. Then we'd get the image instead of the colored banner and we can remove this, save it. And then we're back to just like a simple colored thing, which is kind of cool. Um, next thing I'd like to look at, maybe we look at this on Tuesday if I don't have anything more exciting to go through, uh, but maybe just polishing off this UI experience a little bit so that when you're switching between the states where you just have a placeholder or where you actually have an image, uh, maybe do that transition in a fancier, kind of smoother way. Uh, and maybe just default to always showing that button there instead of just a placeholder that you have to hover over. Uh, so, yeah, the image maybe would override. No, actually, the image wouldn't override the border top the way that we have it set up. Uh, it works out okay to do it this way though. Um, we can always have the color defined. Just make sure that we don't give it an actual border dimension until, uh, unless there's no image. Um, so, yeah, I think that's kind of fine. We probably could do something fancy to avoid that conditional. Like we could do something like, um, yeah, that's actually a good point. Like we should show it if the image fails to load. Although that would still look bad in other ways, but. Um, we probably could do something where instead of using like this image tag this way, I could maybe make this uh, position absolute so that it sits on top of the border. I don't even know if that would work actually. I don't know. We have to see. I might actually have to move this image here in its own div. I don't know. It'd be, uh, be kind of tricky. I'm sure we could come up with a clever way to do it. Um, but anyways, let's uh, do a little save roo here. Show colored border instead of image, if no image, and check out. Way too long for a git commit message, uh, but that's okay. And uh, let's check out our master, no, not master, develop branch, and just merge in that branch. Push that up. Cool. Yeah, so that's that'll be everything for today. Hopefully that was a uh, kind of interesting. Got to walk, got to touch a lot of different pieces there. Got to do a little bit of CSS finagling, some backend, a uh, little bit of testing and TDD stuff, uh, and uh, some front end view stuff too. So kind of touched the whole stack today, which is pretty fun. Um, I will uh, see everyone on Tuesday if you're around uh, for another stream. Otherwise, I'll see you whenever you're around for the next one. Thanks everyone. See you next time.